it was the nonprofit world. You work a ton. You don't get paid a lot. I was burnt out. I was tired. And I was so ready for something new. And I also felt like where I worked wasn't really fully utilizing all of my skills and genius and all of my ideas. So I went to one of the vice presidents and pitched them a new job. I wrote this job description. I explained mm -hmm. how it would help the organization, why they needed to put me in that role, all my skills, everything. And they said, yes. So, okay, everything's going right, right? So everything's exciting here. I get the new job. I even got myself a raise. Everything was going to work out. And I met with the vice president on a Friday to go over the job description that she was offering me. And she said, just take the weekend, think about it. Let's chat on Monday and we'll move forward. And on Monday, I go in and there is a company-wide announcement that that vice president would be leaving the organization to go work elsewhere. And the job offer that I was set to accept was no longer available for me. I was so checked out. I was so checked out. Like I couldn't focus. I didn't pay attention. I didn't really care. I wasn't interested in the role. All the things that you don't want in an employee. And I started coming up with a plan to get out. And that's when I started doing the side hustle thing for the first time. I got my first client on the side. Uh, my business partner, I had a business partner at the time, and she she took a week off. It was planned. And uh, about halfway through her week off, she texted me and said, hey, can we meet for coffee? I want to talk to you about something. I said, yeah, of course. And we met and sat down. And she said, I've been doing some soul searching this week and realized that I don't want to do this business anymore. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, great. Now this is really scary because I quit my uh -huh. full I quit my full time job with a business partner. Like she and I quit our jobs together. We went into business together. I had that safety and security. And now I was gonna be on my own. We had been in business for a year. I had I had burned through my savings. I had, you know, probably like ten or twenty thousand dollars in credit card debt at the time. Um trying to keep this business afloat. And instead of looking at the opportunity of, oh, I can do more of what I want now. I get to keep all the money. I don't have to split the money. I just looked at this offer, this, this, this fear of like, oh my God, she's leaving me. What am I going to do? I don't know how to do anything, which just wasn't true at all. The first thing I did is I looked at all the clients we had at that time. And I realized that while most of them had come through a relationship or connection with my, with my partner, that uh, when it came down to the brass tacks of like creating the offer and talking through what was included and making the pitch and negotiating, I really managed all of that. And I was able to kind of put the numbers to it and think about it in that way. So that was part of it. The other part was just looking at my, my history of how, what I had done in my career before then and other places and realizing that I was really great. I am really great at building relationships and connecting with people. And, and my background was in the nonprofit world where I would get people to give me money for literally nothing in exchange other than their name on like a sign in a lobby, right? Like that was it. I either want them to really love what I'm doing and love me and resonate with me and be magnetized to me, or I want them to hate it and be repelled and turned off and not interested. So that's the first thing <laughs> yeah. is being really okay with only speaking to one person and knowing that by only speaking to one person or type of person, you're going to alienate a hell of a lot of people. And that's the best thing you can do in business. Another thing I think about is I want to build relationships with people, especially online. I want to build relationships with them that's rooted in really three big things. So shared values, shared experiences, and shared stories. If you're building relationships with people that are rooted in those three things, you are then building a relationship that's that really comes from your desire to connect genuinely with people and not your desire to monetize the relationship. And understanding that the monetization of a relationship from social media is simply just a byproduct of the intentionality you put into actually building the relationship through values, stories, and experiences. People are really seeing through vanity metrics online and they really recognize that like the number of followers you have on Instagram, it doesn't really mean anything at the end of the day. It really comes down to your ability to move those followers to action. And that's why you don't want a bunch of people following you who don't get who you are and what you do. You really only want the people there who are bought in, who are part of what's going on because they're the ones who are going to buy your stuff. Time is irreplaceable. We have a limited amount of time. 
on this trip around the sun, you know, so this is it. But we can make as much money as we want. We can make all the money in the world, but we can't create more time. So that's the first thing I live by. And knowing that my time is so much more valuable than the money that I'm going to get for that. Uh, the second thing is the fact that every yes is a no to something else. So every time I'm saying yes to something, I'm saying no to something that is maybe more important to me or that's more valuable for me. So that's honestly, Michelle, something I'm literally always reminding myself of. <laughs> I know how to build relationships. I know how to find connection with people. I know how to speak to people in such a way that it kind of speaks to their desires and their hopes and wishes and motivates something inside of them and lets them see what's possible and get them bought into something bigger than themselves. And that's what it really came down to. And I took that from political organizing all the way to even what I do now and how I sell online. It's still about that, getting people bought into this bigger vision and this bigger idea of what's possible and then inviting them to become part of that.